One of the biggest problems in D&D games is when the motivations of the characters don't fit with the motivations of the other characters or don't fit with the campaign that you're actually going to run. Even the best players can fall victim to this when they build their characters independently of the others and when they build it independently of the story of the adventure. Whether it's a rogue who steals from the other characters or a mercenary fighter who will only defend other characters for pay or a hermit who really doesn't want to be the other characters at all. When you have characters who aren't motivated to adventure with others, it can be a real drag on the campaign, even if the character seemed interesting to the player who built it originally. This leads to probably the greatest cardinal sin that a player can commit during a D&D game, which is to say, well, that's what my character would do. There's something we can do during our session zero to help avoid this, and that's for the DM to define the character's motivation to work together before the characters are built. And really, that motivation is to cooperate with the other characters to solve whatever the main drive is of the campaign. One thing I like to do is put together a single page campaign guide for the players before we actually begin a campaign. And in this, I like to define the core motivation for the characters so that it's very clear to, to the players what kind of characters are going to work well in this campaign and what kind of characters they should build. And I usually like to summarize it in one line. As an example, in my Rhyme of the Frostmaiden game, I had a line that said, Your character cooperates with the others in order to help the people of Ten Towns survive the endless night. It's one sentence, but that one sentence helps players understand that their character should be built around the idea of cooperating with the other members of the party to help the people of Ten Towns survive the Endless Night. It's really nice and straightforward. It's not too pushy. There's lots of reasons that they could do that, but it's very clear that your job isn't to be a mercenary or to go explore other places, that you should care about the people of Ten Towns. For Descent into Avernus, we could do something similar, where we say, your character is a brave adventurer working in companionship with the other characters to defend El Terrell and serve the Hell Riders. This helps build a good, solid motivation for the rest of the time the characters are engaged into Descent into Avernus. So we can build these one-line things and put it in front of our players before they start building their character so that when they're building their character, they're keeping in mind what the core motivation is for them in the adventure. But also, most importantly, we're reinforcing the need for their character to work in cooperation with the other characters. They're not working against them. They're not stealing from them. They're not demanding money. They're not off in seclusion or going off to support their own motivations, they are there to help work with the group to solve the problem of the campaign. As a DM, this actually helps us define what the main objective is of a campaign. Sometimes this main objective isn't clear to the characters when they first start, so we have to kind of dissect it and think, what motivation can we give them in the beginning that will help? We don't say that El Terrell is going to fall into hell and that the characters need to go into hell to save it once again. Nor do we say that they have to end the Endless Night in Rime of the Frostmaiden. Instead, we help define the character's motivation up front so that when the campaign becomes clearer, when that shift occurs, they're already in line with the motivation for the rest of the campaign because their original motivation was already aiming in that direction. Sometimes even the best players build characters that don't really get along with the rest of the group. And while it can seem kind of interesting when they're building the character, at the table it really doesn't work out. So one thing we can do is sit down in, the, in our session zero and make sure it's clear to all of the players that their characters should be working in cooperation with one another. It's, a, it's an easy trick. It feels a little heavy-handed, but it's a good trick to make sure that all of the characters are working together and you don't have to deal with a lot of inner party conflicts during your game. If you enjoyed this video, you can help me out in four ways. One, you can subscribe to the Sly Flourish newsletter. Two, you can subscribe to me on YouTube. Three, you can support me on Patreon by going to patreon.com slash slyflourish. And four, you can pick up my books Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master and the Lazy DM's Workbook. Thank you very much and have a great day.